This is Leaders in the Trenches, and your host today is Gene Hammett. Hi, this is Gene Hammett. I'm the host of Leaders in the Trenches. My question for you today is this. What do you do when you're faced with inflection points in the growth of your company? Well, inflection points are those serious moments of of leverage and, and pressure that you start to feel inside your business. And sometimes you don't feel them till after you've already gone through them and you can look back. But we have a special guest today who's been through many inflection points in the growth of his company. Uh, Clarity Voice is around 40 employees. Gary uh, Gerke is the CEO there and founder. And he talked about specifically when he got about 15, 20 employees, what he had to change as a leader, some of the structure that he needed to put in place to be able to continue the growth. Now, we talked a little bit afterwards. He's hired six people in the last quarter. Uh, he's projecting even more growth, and he knew he had to get a handle of that growth in today's world, or back then, so that he could grow today. So today we have this interview with you on Leaders in the Trenches with Gary, talking about the inflection points of growth. Hi, Gary. How are you? Gene, I'm doing great. Thank you. And uh, I'm honored to be on Leaders in the Trenches today. Well, we're honored to have you. I, I've already let our audience know a little bit about you, but I'd love to know uh, in your own voice about you and who you serve. Sure. So I'm I'm the founder and CEO of Clarity Voice. Uh, Clarity Voice is a, a voice over internet phone service and a unified communications company. And we niche in servicing uh, franchise businesses and auto dealerships, primarily companies that are uh, privately held, where the influencer or decision maker. Uh, about technology as a stake in the P&L. We like to truly uh, help our clients succeed, and uh, we found with privately held businesses, we're able to do so. Well, Gary, when we talked about having you on the show, it, it was really an interesting story of the growth of your company. You've gotten up to about 40 employees right now. Um, do you remember any specific one or two inflection points around the growth that you had to work through? as a leader? Sure. The, the, um, probably the most significant one was uh, b- between 15 and 20 uh, employees, Gene. And uh, I didn't realize it at the time, uh, but uh, that, that's where the number of relationships um, and, and each, each relationship has its own dynamics. So it's, it's me with each of uh, my team members, and then the team with each other. Uh, but the the number of dynamics became uh, uh, too too great for me to to manage and know everything that was going on and and all the nuance. And it, it became a problem when um, it, when I still wanted to to uh, run the company um, as if everybody was uh, was my friend. And um, and that I knew what was going on in their personal lives, and and uh, were able to make decisions on the fly, uh, particular for for that person. For example, if I knew that uh, uh, you know so, somebody was uh, having some difficulties in their relationship, I might say, well, why don't you take a couple of days off, or or uh, maybe I'd suggest uh, you know take the weekend and and go up into northern Michigan and just, just relax. Like you might do with, with a close friend or a family member, or even in a small, um, a small company, uh, you can do that because everybody knows uh, where, where your heart and your head's at, and uh, there's less chance of misinterpretation by other people uh, in the company. And right around 15, 20, um, uh, is the inflection point, and, and I didn't realize this until uh, I, I grew a little larger. I, I brought in an operations person at an executive level to uh, to help me grow the company, and um, and uh, she started giving me feedback about uh, what what team members were, were saying. And, and I, I actually didn't believe her at first. I, I thought that she was trying to ruin my relationship with, with, with the team uh, and sabotage it. 
because she would point out that the way I thought something I said to somebody was in, being interpreted was not at all the way it was being interpreted. Uh, and uh, it, it, it almost uh, created so much, uh, so much drama and so much chaos in the company um, that, that uh, the dysfunction of the company would have halted the company's growth. Uh, l luckily, uh, I, I finally saw that this was an inflection point and change was needed and I needed to change the way that I approached the team in the way that I allowed uh, my leadership to, to uh, manage the company and approach the team. Do you remember any specific change that you made as a, as a leader at a personal level? Oh, oh gosh. Um, the, the word that comes to mind, uh, Gene, is, is structure. And, um, uh, and I'm going to say clarity, uh, no pun intended. But uh, prior to that inflection point, uh, th there wasn't clarity, there wasn't a structure in, in, uh, in responsibilities, in uh, re reporting and communication. It was much more ad hoc, uh, like you can do in, in, a, in a very small organization, uh, you know, manage from the hip, hip so to speak. Um, uh, what, what we did around that point is uh, uh, took recommendations from a consultant. Uh, I'm going to give a plug to my friend Gina Wickman, who wrote the book Traction and, and uh, founded the uh, Entrepreneur Operating System EOS. And we implemented this EOS system in, in what it uh, where we saw the most impact immediately was in defining uh, roles and responsibilities instead of position, but we defined roles and had each person accountable for their role in the company. And, and then we, uh, we started with our meetings having uh, highly structured meetings so that they were productive and not uh, – uh, really not politicking and, and uh, socializing. Hi there, this is Gene. I'm the host of Leaders in the Trenches. I wanted to give you a free gift. I've been working with Audible for almost a year now because my book published last year and I've been listening to Audible books for probably three or four years. I really love it and I wanted to give you a free gift. If you want a 30-day free trial of Audible, all you have to do is go to audibletrial.com forward slash Leaders in the Trenches. That will give you access to any book you want. You don't have to buy The Trap of Success, which is my book. You can buy any book you want. So if there's something you've been wanting to read, just don't have time, make sure you go to audibletrial.com forward slash leaders in the trenches. All right, back to the interview. Do you get much pushback from the team when you started making those changes? Um, I got buy-in from the team to do it. Um, it it's, it's important to... Uh, sell people, sell the team, uh, especially sell your manager management on uh, on change. So prior to just doing a, I, I won't say prior. Instead of doing a cram down and saying this is how how we're doing things from now on, uh, I brought everybody together. Uh, it re really had a sales pitch done about. The, the idea of having more structured and having responsibility, we were able to solve the, uh, uh, you know, what the benefits would be, um, and I framed it in a way that uh, I wanted the feedback and opinion of everybody in the room uh, because it was such an important move, and um, we had uh, just about everybody buy in, and those who who didn't. Um, but they self-selected uh, their way out of the company, uh, which was better for all of us, actually. Right. You know, a lot of this sounds like some of the work I do is around going beyond responsibility to get people to take real ownership of the work that they're doing, the projects, the client responsibility. Have you found that people are taking more ownership of, of their work day in and day out after these changes? Oh, with, without a doubt. 
in in general, I believe that all of us as human beings in our in our vocations, uh, we, we want to make a contribution. And in addition to making a contribution, uh, we, we want clarity about uh, the expectations, about what we have responsibility and control over, and and uh, we we want to know what we don't have to be concerned about. Um, so it's uh, so because we now have that that you know clarity of of what everybody uh, is responsible for and what they get to uh, champion and succeed at. Uh, the, there's ownership in in those areas, and, and you get. Uh, you know, I'll use the word synergy. It's uh, it, it's it's not used as much <laughs> anymore. But this idea that uh, 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 now everybody is working synergistically, and the group produces far far more. They they produce a multiple uh, of of what they once did as uh, over individuals and being additive. Is there anything that you had to go through at a personal level to be a better leader through all of this? I'm still going through it. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for being honest because that's, I feel the same way after 25 years, but is there anything specific that stands out that you had to let go of to be the kind of leader that, that has a company of 40 employees that are growing and, and getting the work done? Yeah, the, the larger the company gets, if I want it to continue to grow, um, I, I have to be uh, le less less of the doer and more of uh, the visionary, and that sounds that sounds great until you put it in practice. <laughs> when you put it in practice, what it means is um, sometimes I have to bite my tongue, uh, and in, instead of throwing out what my idea is on how to solve a problem or get to a result, I have to allow uh, my, my team member to, to figure it out and only interject if, if, uh, if, if I'm really concerned that they may uh, be going off in a direction that, that can be destructive or maybe they don't understand the consequences. But that, uh, that's, it's difficult to buy my time because I have an opinion about everything and like most uh, entrepreneur business leaders, um, uh, especially of, of uh, small businesses growing, uh, we've always had to wear many hats and, and many times we wear every hat. Uh, so we, we have an opinion about everything. And the only way that we were able to survive in the early days uh, and, and grow at all was to to be that rugged individual and do it all. Well, that same rugged individualist uh, tendency that that got us started and, and created momentum and growth, uh, there comes a point where you have to back back off and and allow others to uh, really spread their wings and and start start. start uh, uh, contributing and being the key contributor. Is there the benefit on this, Gene? Is go ahead. I, I was just going to say that the the, the benefit is, um, well, I, I I keep a close watch on where the company is going, but I, I don't want to be blindsided by uh, some decision that was made, and and I won't be. Um, uh, you, you start to de-stress and start to enjoy uh, having some, some time back and being able to do more of, of what you want to do and what I want to do instead of what I have to do. When you think about the moments where you had to learn to bite your tongue more, was there anything specifically going on in the company that, that tuned you into how you needed to evolve as a leader through that? Uh, boy, I, I I think I had to take a hard look at um, at why our growth was plateauing, and I, 
I, I had heard from uh, other speakers the concept of uh, uh, the ceiling of complexity, uh, which is where uh, where I I had grown the company um, at a rate into a point that um, that that I could with my current skill set. So th there came a point where I had to decide um, what was more important, um, ma ma maintaining more and having a, a big ego in a smaller checkbook <laughs> or having a bigger checkbook and, and a lesser ego. And... Um, it, it, and we laugh about it, and everybody, I, I'm sure, listening to the podcast or watching this is, is saying, well, of course, I would rather have the big check. But really? Because when it comes to decision point, I know for myself, uh, you know, ego is a negative word, but another way to put it is that feeling of satisfaction of of being in control. And... Um, you know, it, it, it's not good or bad. It's it's just a choice. I I decided that I was going to take the risk and um, and give up more control and allow uh, the team to to grow the business. Gary, as we begin to wrap this up, I, I want to give you a chance to like take us to where you are today. Uh, describe the kind of team you have and the kind of work that you're most proud of, um, so that we understand more about what you do. Sure. So what what, um, what what I'm still front and center of is making sure that our our culture is followed, um, and that the the vision of what can be is painted. My team, and as I've grown the team both from uh, management and um, specialists in, in the different areas of our company uh, it is I, I've continued to uh, just paint the picture of what the future looks like and uh, and what we're going to be known for maybe I'll use the term the legacy that um, uh, that, that w what are people going to talk about what are our customers going to talk about uh, if we're gone? And that that certainly goes, you know, beyond uh, a financial success or achievement, or uh, and, and really goes to what what impact, what contribution uh, do we make to our customers? And and my job is to continuously remind uh, our current team and our new members teach them what that is, who we are, what our character is, and what our values are and mission is a company. Well, I appreciate you sharing that with us, Gary. You know, you talking about the inflection points and and learning to bite your tongue around uh, being the kind of leader, letting your employees empower them to move forward, make their own decisions. Uh, that's a really parallels a lot of the stories we have here. So I think it's a perfect uh, interview today. So thanks for being here at Leaders in the Trenches. Is there any way that our audience can uh, get in touch with you and check out the company? Um, where would you send them to? Well, our, our website is uh, www.clarityvoice.com. And uh, of course, I'm e easiest to uh, be contacted via LinkedIn. Um, uh, my last name is Gerke, G-O-E-R-K-E, -E, first name Gary, and the CEO of Clarity Voice, and I'd love to hear from you. Well, thanks for being here. Thank you, Gene. Oh, that's a great interview. I, I love you know hearing some of the, the struggles that a leader and a founder has gone through, because we've all been through it. We've all been through uh, these moments where we doubt ourselves and we're not sure exactly what we're to do, or we realize that we've been doing it the wrong way. Gary was vulnerable enough and authentic to share some of the realness of what's going on behind leadership to talk about getting buy-in from his employees and about biting his tongue and about the inflection points that it takes to grow as a leader. So 
As always, I really appreciate you being here, being a part of the tribe of Leaders in the Trenches. If you have any questions, make sure you reach out. Let me know. As always, lead with courage, and I'll see you next time.